Welcome to part two of our live training session here with our RB25 Swap 240SX. In our last video, we built the base calibration file. This video, we're gonna get our engine fired off and running. We're gonna be dialing in the idle control, making sure the engine's gonna start properly, and setting our ignition timing with a timing light, making sure that the infinity is synced to the engine. So when we come in a certain amount of timing, we'll be receiving that exact amount of timing at the engine. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump into his training tutorial so we can get started. Welcome back to our live training session here with our RB25 swapped 240SX. In the last video, we built our base calibration file, our base session file, and we have everything ready to go. So this video, we're going to be firing off the engine, we're going to be checking our timing with a timing light, making sure we've sorted out fuel and spark timing at idle, and just having the engine hold its own stabilized idle. We're also going to be making sure that the cranking fuel and the after start fuel are going to be correct for this engine so it will crank up and fire on its own. So when we're done with this video, the engine will be idling, it'll be starting, we don't have to give it throttle input, and we'll find then the next video when we start to do our part throttle cruise tuning, we don't have to worry about the idle. We can find we can just drive the car, come back into idle, it won't stall, doesn't do any kind of weird behavior. This is always the first order of operations when you get an engine fired up and running. Idle control can take a bit of time to get sorted out. Now this has stock camshafts and reasonable size injectors, so it shouldn't be a huge pain to get this engine running right. If you're dealing with really large cams and really large injectors, it is gonna be a little bit more tricky than what we're finding in this video. And I do have some examples of some other engines that I've tuned with Infinity in the live training course that you can go back and reference and check, check some of those out. So some tips and tricks within those videos, but we'll still find what I'm showing and what I'm talking about in the video here is going to be completely relevant for any engine as far as the order of operations and what you need to do. So what I wanna do at this point I want to go and do a basic sensor check. This is going to be the very first thing before we fire up any engine, after we've put the standalone and installed it on the car and got all the sensors configured, we need to make sure the sensors actually read right. We didn't do that in the last video. We're going to verify that in this very first portion of the video, that these basic sensors are dialed, that we can trust them when we get the engine fired off and running, our map pressure sensor, uh, our coolant temperature, intake air, or throttle position, they're not going to be reading off because those can influence what's going on with fuel and spark timing. And if we don't have them right, we'll find the engine never, not, never actually runs right. It's always gonna have some kind of a problem. So we wanna go and make sure that we are accounting for this 100% and that everything is gonna be uh, dialed in as we found in the last video. We assumed, because we put all the sensor data in, it's correct, this is gonna be now validating that. Let's do that here first. So what I'm gonna do here is actually, we're gonna be talking about working within our VE fuel tuning window here first. I have that open right now on my laptop screen. Um, if you take a look down here under the text grid, we find a lot of the basic sensor data here within this window. Uh, first thing we want to discuss is going to be our map pressure sensor. Right now it's reading approximately zero PSI on key on engine off conditions. So I have my laptop connected to the infinity, I have the power on in the vehicle, the engine is off. We want to make sure that the map sensor is reading approximately zero PSI on key on engine off status. If you're going to be at elevation, 5,000, 10,000 feet of elevation, it's actually going to be reading a negative value here. So you'll find it might be negative two, negative four PSI. In this case, I'm approximately sea level. And that's why we find it's approximately zero PSI. And that's completely sufficient. This is going to be calibrated, right? And uh, we can use that map sensor reading. Next thing, we have our throttle position. We want to make sure that this is going to be reading zero when we're off the throttle and 100 when we're on the throttle or approximately in those conditions. It's linear anywhere between those two points. Last video, we used our throttle range adjustment parameter in the wizard section to be able to do the min and max rescale. We've done that already and let's go and check this. Right now I'm off the throttle. It's reading 0.1%. That's completely fine. We'll find that anything from our overrun decel fuel cut or the idle control is going to be taking a look at 1 to 2% and less to turn on idle control and overrun. And then anything higher than that, it shuts off idle control and goes into the normal driving fuel and ignition timing areas of within our tables. So we wanna make sure this is calibrated, right? And when we're off the throttle, it's approximately zero, which it is at this point. Now let me put my foot on the throttle and go all the way to the floor. We can see it's now almost 100, 99.8, 99.9. That's gonna be calibrated. So we know that the throttle position here, if I come off, we see it returns to zero there. We know that it is going to be in that zero to 100% range and it is reading right because we have went through that process of making sure it was uh, scaled for the min and max voltages and minimax range of operation. Now the next thing we find here is our coolant temp. This is going to be 78 degrees. If I take a look at my dyno tower right now, that's actually going to be reading approximately 54 degrees. Um, and we'll find in here that this is going to be higher. Now, the engine was running about four hours ago. 
maybe five hours ago. So it still has some residual heat in it. The only way to know if your coolant temp sensor is going to be calibrated right would be on a cold engine status. So I let the engine sit overnight and then I check it. I should see that my coolant temp and my air temp read pretty much the same. In this case, my dyno tower is showing me it's about 54 degrees in the garage here and this is reading higher. I'm going to have to go with that calibration scale as being accurate uh, and we're not going to have to be able to second guess it. When we do a cold start video over this car, we can check our coolant temp and see if that's going to be matching our air temp. That'll give us another way to check. In this case, I'd have no way to check if that's valid or not. I'm going to assume that it is. We don't want to see this kind of deviation or difference. If your engine's cold, it's sat overnight, uh, hasn't been fired off, and you're finding your air and coolant temp are off that much, that means you have your coolant temp scale incorrectly scaled, or you have a sensor wiring problem, or something else is going on there. So that is going to be something we're going to assume is good. So we're going to move on here to air temp. As I was saying before on the dyno, cell, dyno tower here, it's showing me about 54 degrees. It's showing- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.